Hi, I'm Jake from TradeLab.ai, and today we're going to talk about how to implement breakeven into a trading view strategy. So breakeven is when you have a stop loss and you put it, you know, below where you entered, and at some point you hit uh, take profit. Uh, maybe that's your first line or your second line, um, and at some point you want to move that stop line up to your entry price. And if it's a true break even, you want it to be your entry price plus your fees, right? That way you're, you're totally breaking even, not losing any money if something goes wrong. So what we're going to do is set that up real quick. Uh, we're going to start by copying the generic trading view strategy. And I'm gonna hit copy and hit yes. All right, so now that we have this template, we can uh, open this up by clicking edit. And it'll ask us to set up our alerts. Uh, normally you'd hit do it now and we would go through and select our exchange and our symbol. We're gonna select Bybit today and we'll go with good old BTC. Okay, uh, so here normally we would come in uh, go to trading view and set up our alert. Um, today, I'm going to be more focusing on break even, so we're going to skip that part. Uh, we'll hit all done. We do have other videos that show you how to do that. All right, so let's talk about break even. So we got long enter, short enter, long exit, short exit. This is a standard combo strategy that trades long and shorts. We have four rules um, and we're just listening for an alert that says buy and an alert that says sell um, and doing the opposite. So if we bought, then when we hear a sell, then we'll, we'll exit. Uh, this strategy also uses TPSL um, and I'm actually meaning to edit this, uh, to set this up a little bit better, but basically, what we'll want to do is create a stop loss line, which it'll actually already be there for you guys when we see if it connects. But uh, where do we want to place the line? We want to place the line, let's just say, at 2%. Um, we don't need to do negative 2 uh, or anything like that. I'll take care of any of that. So we just want to do 2% above or below our entry. Um, and we'll say it's not trailing. Uh, I'm going to turn trailing on when we break even, uh, but I'm going to leave it off right now. So I'm going to hit next. Uh, when is the line hit? Uh, when the line is hit, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to go ahead and take profit. Um, and this is a, a stop line. So we're actually just going to close, right? And we're going to exit. Um, but that's, I, I need to change the uh, text there. But that's 100% uh, of the position, take profit for our stop loss there. And then uh, we'll hit market for our stop loss. And uh, what, what do we want to name the line? We'll just say stop line. All right, so now we have a take line and a stop line. Uh, I'm gonna edit our take line real quick uh, using the quick edit um, to say that this is also going to be 2%. And you know what? We need, you know what I'm going to do actually? I'm going to delete this take line. And let's give an example of how to set up uh, multiple take lines. So if I say take profit, let's set up three. Uh, that way, when I hit my first one, we can break even, and then I'll have my other two take profits. So, uh, how do I want to place my three take profit lines? I'll place them with an offset. Uh, how do I want to space my lines? They'll be equally spaced. And uh, when my lines are hit, what do I want to do? I will pick different amounts for each. All right, so where do I want to place the lines? I'm just going to place my lines two, four, six. So if I just put two right here, it'll be two, four, six for my three lines. Now, <clears throat> now I can also do, uh, let's say I wanted to start it uh, five or I don't know if that's realistic. Three. Let's say I want to start at three. OK, 
Okay. Now, at that point, if I want to go three, five, seven, and do a two offset, I could start at three and then space them out by two. So that's how that works. So I would say two, two, four, six. Okay, and we'll go next. Uh, when the lines are hit, what do you want to do? I want to take profit and I want to take 10%. I want to take uh, 30% and I want to take 100%. I want to take 10% of my original position, 30% of my original position, and I want to close whatever's left. Okay. Uh, what type of order do you want to place? I want to place a limit for my takes and I'm going to say take line and that's going to give me take line one, two, and three. So now I have my take lines and my stop line. Uh, we're going to do a break even. So I hit save and let's set up a break even rule. So if I hit add rule, we have this new rule down here and I'll say break even. And what a break even is going to look for is instead of looking for an alert, it's going to compare the current trade. Now, this is going to run on. Um, this is going to run on Trade Labs heartbeat alerts, which means that uh, we're going to be running these for you. You don't have to worry about sending alerts. Uh, we'll have these running in the background. Um, so obviously this will only fire because you're looking for a custom alert um, that has a type of sell or a type of buy. These will only fire when you send alerts. But if I make a, a rule down here that says trade and it's only looking for the current price to be greater than uh, something, then it's always going to run, right? Now, what is that something? How are we going to decide where where we want that. Um, what we can do in this case, so in this example, what I've done is I've set up a static 2% uh, for my stop line. So in this particular case, instead of using uh, current price, we could actually say price movement percentage. And that gives us the movement uh, in and in which direction uh, it went. So if we were going to go that way, we would say that this is our long break even rule. And we would want it to move uh, upwards at 2% two, uh, 2 to hit our take line. So we're, we're trying to see if our take line is hit and we want it to go upwards at 2% to hit our take line, okay? And then what we would want to do is set our strategy line, um, stop line to a price. And we would use a reference field on that price and we would say entry price. All right. And um, I'm going to be real disappointed in myself because I don't think that this is the build that has my fix in it. Um, so, bummer. Uh, okay, so I don't have a good example uh, right this second, and I don't have one running. But next, what you would do is you would use add, and you would select strategy lines, and when you go to do this on the live site, um, this should work uh, uh, or it will um, soon as that's updated. But uh, right now you can't select any lines when you do add because they're not numbers. Uh, I have fixed this, it just needs to get pushed out. Um, but basically, let's just say I'm doing add right here. You would come in here and you would say stop line and because I'm adding, what I want to do is I want to add my, oh, sorry. I want to add to my price. I want to use a reference field and I want to add my uh, fee, right? And so that's, that's how that works. Um, 
Again, this would be add, I'm sorry for that being clunky, I'm disappointed, but uh, that's that's what it would look like. Set, add, um, and you would do uh, set your stop line price to entry price and then add your stop line price with fee cost. And that sets that and I am automatically going to move that line. You don't, you don't need to come in here and do uh, place stop order or anything. You, these are for more manual things. You don't need to do any of that. Um, all you need to worry about is moving your lines and I will cancel the old line and place a new line for you. All right. So one other thing that we can do is we can set our strategy lines, our stop line, and it's trailing to true. And now our uh, stop line is going to be true for trailing. Okay, so that's how we set our break even. Um, and because we did a price move of two, we would need to clone this and make a short copy of this so that it could be negative two. And since we're going to be running these both, we need to make sure that we know which side that we're on. So if you look over here, we're whenever we hear a long alert, we're setting the strategy side to, well, <laughs> I'm on a bugged version of this. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have been on this testnet version. Um, so this would normally say buy and this would normally say sell. Uh, and it does, I promise you it does on the live. Um, anyway, so what we would want to do over here on the on the conditions is to uh, look at strategy, look at side, and we would make sure that side is equal to either buy or sell. So this is our short. So we would want it to be equal to sell, and we would want this one to be uh, strategy side. buy all right and so that's how that works uh that's a break-even example on uh fixed percentage if we were doing a fixed usd offset so if i wanted to say once it moves 30 dollars okay now that's not me making 30 dollars that's once it moves 30 dollars uh we could do price movement and this would be usd so $30. So if price movement is greater than so and so. Uh oh, did, did I did I do that too? So price movement has to be greater than 2%. And then price movement has to uh sorry. Needs to be less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Okay, so I could have been more graceful with that, but does everybody get that? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Sorry for mixing that up, but uh, that's the great thing about recording these videos is I can go back and edit. But <laughs> when I do it live, you, you guys, you don't get that uh, benefit. So, okay. So that's how that works. Um, so at this point, Let's show uh, how we would do this. Uh, I was just talking about how we would do this with price movement and a USD. So if I wanted to say this was less than uh, 30, negative 30, it went down $30, right, for price movement. Um, then I could also do the same thing. What if I was doing the exact price? What if I was sending my take profit or my stop loss um, and all of my stop loss information is being sent from trading view. Okay. If that's the case, then when we enter our long, normally if I'm, I actually have a example of a uh, Johnny's bot trading view template that has uh, the TPSL set up that has uh, variables in it built in, right? So it's got 
it's not even variables. It's actually just connected directly to the alert, right? So the alert is set up so that it has long T TP and SL uh, and short, and these are connected. The stop line is connected to those so that it, it, uh, it automatically places them directly from trading view. Okay, so uh, there's another video that shows that, but basically you set those up in the alerts and then you configure your TPSL and those are just directly linked. Now, we don't have to worry about variables in that case um, because like I said, they're directly linked and it's pretty simple. If we wanna do a break even with dynamics, we need to remember where our take line is. Um, and if I receive an alert on my entry rule with my take line, at that moment, I can place my stop line and everything or my take lines and, and that's all okay. Mm. But once that moment's over, I no longer remember what that alert told me. Okay. And so what we, what we use to solve that is variables. We just save that information in a variable so that we can reference it later. So for example, we would say set, uh, well, it would be helpful if I made a variable first. Let's go to variables and let's say plus, um, let's call this uh, take, uh, let's just call this TP1, okay? So this is my TP1 price, it's gonna be a number. Okay, and we're gonna go to edit. Okay, so now on my entry rule, for long, I'm going to set my strategy variable, TP1. I'm gonna set this price, uh, use our long TP that's coming from our, um, in this case, we probably have more, more than one, just uh, one TP. We might have like TP1, two, three, like David does, right? Um, but we would use whatever field is in our alert and we would set our variable to what's in our alert. Okay, so that makes sure that we remember what our alert had for TP1. Okay, and we can do the same thing over here. We would set, and it would be the exact same thing, even for short. It would just set it to there. Boom. And uh, well, it would be short, I guess. Fair enough. It would be short TP. And then there we go. Okay, so once we remember that, Remember, we've already done break even uh, for fixed, but now we're doing this for dynamic. And so we're using a variable to compare the current price. So in this example, and in most examples, when we're sending take profit from TradingView, they'll most likely send the full price, right? Like, you know, put your take profit at 33,000, whatever, right? And so we would want to compare the trade's current price which would be the full price. And for short, we would want it to be um, less than our take profit because it's going down, right? And it would be TP1. So we would want it to be less than, the current price is less than TP1. And if we're on a sell and we're doing that, then go ahead and move our line and we're good to go, right? Um, and here we, uh, I don't have add and subtract, remember, but if we're doing a short, we would wanna subtract here and add here, right? So just remember how math flip-flops. Um, but yeah, so we have our break-even, uh, we can do uh, our current price for our dynamic, and we could do TP1, and this would be greater than, and that would be less than, and that's how you set up dynamic. Okay, well, that's gonna conclude this, uh, this particular video, this setup video. Uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions, feel free to join us on Discord. You can also hop into the help button at the bottom of any screen and uh, search for any questions that you have or create a support ticket. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more updates. Have a great day.